Let's start with such news. Recently, the authorities of Thailand closed Maya Bay to tourists for an indefinite period. The official reason was the pollution of its territory with garbage. And now let's see what interesting things were discovered there. The comrade James Grimmer reports that in early 2018, he published a short video about a petrified giant lying in Maya Bay. Within a month, the number of views of this video approached a million and the Thai government imposed a temporary ban on visiting this territory. After that, he released a video in which he clearly showed the petrified giant lying in the valley of Lao Island, Maui, Hawaii. After the release of the second video, the Thai government in October 2018 imposed a permanent ban on visiting Maya Bay. Is this a coincidence or are they hiding something from us? Our world is full of mysteries. Where do the theories that fewer and fewer people believe in these days come from? And this generates a huge number of guesses and the boldest assumptions. One such theory is the idea that there is a form of life called silicon-based. In other words, the idea that an ordinary stone can be alive, breathe, reproduce, move, and so on. At first glance, this seems simply incredible, but there is evidence of the existence of silicon-based life forms. And maybe it's not as developed and manifested as protein-based life just because Earth doesn't have enough comfortable conditions for its flourishing. Remnants of silicon-based life are everywhere. You could ignore this incident if similar finds were not encountered all over the world. Here's a giant human skull for example. Of course, you can talk about the craftsmanship of nature which pulled out such exhibits with wind and water but it's hard to believe in that. There are two options, either it's man-made or it's an independent form of life. And considering a number of signs, let's look at it. Later, we can say that it's most likely some kind of living organism. There is an opinion that the climate on Earth was different before, more suitable for ancient life forms, namely silicon-based life forms previously predominated on Earth, and it is their remains that we can encounter everywhere today. Here, for example, is another similar exhibit, the stump of a giant tree. These stone structures are by no means lifeless matter, but rather a real form of life. One of the objects of research was the agate stone. Scientists talk about how studying the structure of the agate stone allows us to see signs of nutrition, growth lines, and later its regeneration. The anatomy of the body, wound healing, and cracks in the rings are clearly visible and also to see the difference in sexes between these living organisms. Gender differences are clearly visible in agate, the striped body of the stone is male and the crystalline body is female. The study also showed that basalt is a kind of international soil for them. Also, the study of stones allows us to see the process of reproduction. The process of seed formation and their subsequent exit from the mother's body takes place in the stones. You can also see the peculiar caves where the seeds originate and from which they subsequently appear. There is also information about the cultivation of stones in Romania. They have an amazing shape, constantly grow and have a peculiar leathery cover. And such an example is far from unique. There is a mountain in China that literally lays eggs. New egg-shaped stones are constantly forming on the surface of the mountain, which then separate and begin to grow on their own. These eggs first appear on the surface of the mountain and then mature for about 30 years before separating from the surface. The detached stones resemble dinosaur eggs in size, their diameter reaches 60 centimeters and their weight is up to 300 kilograms. And the example of China is not unique. All over the world we can find egg-shaped stones everywhere. You've probably come across something similar too. But it is often believed that these are stones polished by seawater and it does not matter that the sea is often not nearby. Scientists also have an answer to this, so the sea was here before. Everything is much easier to explain. Stones are not as dead as we used to think, they are also able to reproduce and they are no different from domestic chickens or any other bird. The internal structure of these stone formations is much more interesting. For example, in Kazakhstan there is a find in which a stone egg is split in half and we can see that it has a perfect round shape not only outside but also inside. The fracture of this stone clearly shows its layered structure. While the outer round shape can be explained in some way by natural phenomena such as water and wind, how does the polishing work inside? 
The photo clearly shows that the egg made of silicon-based stone resembles a real egg with visible yolk and protein. And this cannot be attributed to some kind of coincidence because it is clear that this is not just a stone but some kind of life form. Then the question arises, if silicon-based life exists, then why is it so inactive? There is a theory that our climate is too cold for silicon-based structures. We can give an example from a protein-based life. Living beings with a protein structure have a condition called suspended animation, which is a slowdown or complete cessation of all processes under the influence of adverse environmental conditions such as lack of heat, water, food, and so on. Thus, it can be assumed that all silicon-based life forms are simply in a state of suspended animation since the climate of our planet is unfavorable for them, therefore their activity is so unnoticeable. But if you look closely, it becomes obvious that we, the protein form of life on the planet, are not alone. The mystery of our time is the movement of stones in Death Valley, USA. The mystery of the movement of stones on the planet and in other lands is likely to remain a mystery only to scientists, but for us it is already completely clear. Death Valley in the USA is the hottest place on Earth, so hot that plants cannot grow there. Thus, these traces left by rocks in the desert indicate that the temperature is getting high enough for the development of silicon-based life. And we saw how these little stones went for a walk in search of food, they wanted to eat basalt. The activity of silicon-based structures on the surface of our Earth is too slow, so it may seem to us that the stones under our feet are lifeless. I have no doubt that there is a civilization next to us, in relation to which we are as slow creatures as silicon life forms at the current temperatures of the Earth's surface. Here is an example. The largest object flying into the mouth of a volcano was accidentally captured on camera, and this is visible only in frame-by-frame -frame viewing. Currently, this object can fly through the mouth of a volcano for several minutes, but for us, slow-moving creatures, it was just a moment. And there are many similar UFO footage on the internet, in which UFOs are moving at a speed that is not available to us at the moment. Where are the real pictures and where are the fakes? We need to figure it out. And the complete silence of government agencies on this issue indicates that they perfectly understand who they are talking about and what it is. I'm going to read you a Russian story from an eyewitness who encountered this very silicon life form. The Secret of the Fire Salamander Yaroslav inherited the stone lizard from his grandfather. Grandfather Makar, in memory of his youth, passed the Turkestan front, leaving Yaroslav with faded athletic shoes neatly darned into places, a nominal pistol nagan and a lizard figurine made of translucent reddish stone. Grandpa loved this lizard more than anything in the world, calling it his mascot. According to Makar, he found her in a cave in the mountains of Tajikistan where he and the soldiers once set up camp. One day, during an overnight stay, I became very interested in a small object that seemed to cost a lot of money. He was small, about 20 centimeters, and looked as if he was alive, as if he was sleeping, curled up in a ring. Grandfather claimed that the lizard had saved his life twice. During his first injury, to ease the inflamed wound, he applied a cold polished statuette to it and the excruciating pain began to recede and eventually stopped altogether. And a few days later, Macker was wounded again. The wound was pierced through by a bullet that almost grazed her heart and, having lost consciousness, Macker asked his comrades to tie a stone lizard to his pierced chest. It was three days before he regained consciousness and later the doctor shook his head in disbelief. According to all my medical theories, the wounded soldier should have died that day, the doctor said. Yaroslav both believed and did not believe the old man stories. But one day when his daughter caught a bad cold and her temperature rose to 40 and the ambulance still did not arrive, he took an amulet from the shelf and put it on the girl's chest. When the doctors finally arrived, the girl's temperature was already normal and she was fast asleep. Since then, the stone lizard has not left Yaroslav alone. Having set himself the task of solving his mystery, he rummaged through reference books and encyclopedias and soon told me that he understood the secret of his healing. In his opinion, the statuette was carved from a single piece of chalcedony. 
The boys on the beach called these small pieces of translucent stone cream. In 1935, Dr. Evgenia Ivanovna Bagidievna discovered the miraculous properties of chalcedony. Holding the stone at the exit of an ordinary hair dryer, she blew on purulent wounds, achieving an amazing healing effect. The experiments were conducted in military hospitals and ordinary clinics and invariably ended in success. Begidievna promised to achieve everything using the miraculous properties of chalcedony which restore youth and health, but the labor camps swallowed up the dreamer along with her invention. About a year later, while sorting through the family archives, Yaroslav came across an interesting photo. In an old photograph, young Macker was looking directly into the camera, leaning with one hand on the back of a chair and holding a lizard figurine in front of him in the palm of the other. Probably no one but Yaroslav would have noticed anything unusual in this old photo. But he, who had been looking at his grandfather's talisman for several hours, saw that it was not the same statuette. Placing the photo next to the lizard statuette, we compared them for a long time, but in the photo the half-open mouth did not reach the tip of the tail and the position of the paws was completely different. Maybe my grandfather had the statuettes. That was the only reasonable conclusion I made at the time. The fact is that shortly before his death, Magar told Yaroslav, take care of her, she's alive. At the time, I thought he was delusional. Now science does not deny the existence of silicon-based life because carbon, on which the molecules of our bodies are based, and silicon are very similar in properties. It's just that the temperature at which such a life is possible is a thousand degrees. Such conditions are possible underground, at the level of molten lava or in the craters of active volcanoes. It's actually a living substance, he suggested, and she cringed because she was cold. It's just happening very slowly. Look at it in the light, it's not just veins. You can see his internal organs. Of course, I laughed at Yaroslav, but on occasion I turned to the reference books. Everything matched one to one. The cave, where, according to Macker, he found the lizard figurine, was located in a unique place, in the Macaulay Gorges. Coal seams have been burning here for at least 3,000 years. The stones in these places were hot enough to burn the solace of the feet. McCulloch was a real paradise for geographers. The cracks leading to the fiery dungeons were literally covered with crystalline bristles. Unique minerals and footprints of some previously unknown prehistoric animals have been found here. If this lizard could appear anywhere on the surface, it would be here. Yaroslav literally caught fire with this idea. One day, he brought home an electric film oven and decided to create normal conditions for the life of his salamander. A few days later, trouble happened. There was no control over the melting at home. And according to his daughter, that's exactly what happened. After listening to her father's stories, she became curious and she opened the door of the hot oven. In an instant, a red-hot lizard figure jumped out and ran across the floor, leaving a charred trail behind it. The girl, afraid that a fire might start, grabbed a jug and poured water on it. Unable to withstand the temperature drop, the stone lizard shattered into small pieces. Yaroslav was terribly upset but inspired by this idea, he led his expedition to the mountains of Ralwad in search of a fire salamander. These are not just living beings, my friend argued, but intelligent beings underground. There is a civilization there that is millions of years older than humanity, and we do not even suspect what is happening under our feet. Silicon-based fauna and flora can reach sizes that are difficult for us to imagine. Trees several kilometers high and people reaching a kilometer in height. Roger Spear on his Mud Fossils University channel shows his research, during which he discovers the remains of creatures hundreds of kilometers in size on the surface of the Earth. It is interesting to compare photographs of the scalp surface under a microscope with similar structures on the surface of the Earth. According to him, these are the remains of giant creatures, the size of which is difficult for us to imagine. In Russian epics, meetings of heroes of our type with giants are described, for example, with Ilya Muromat, whose height, along with his horse, fit in the palm of the giants. Most likely, they were creatures of our temperature range, having carbon-based bodies. Such sizes could be explained by the presence of high pressure in the atmosphere after the disaster, after which the pressure dropped eight times and people of our height began to be born. 
And over time, these heroes passed away, and memories of them remained only in the epics. In the myths of Earth's history, there is much evidence that the transformation into stone could be carried out with the help of various types of weapons. In Mahasa, for example, there is a technique called drying which instantly deprives a living being of water. Perhaps the Gorgon jellyfish had not only a murder weapon but also the transformation of carbon-based life into organosilicon, and the person who was exposed to this effect was petrified forever. If entire armies could be destroyed by such types of impacts as, for example, the Terracotta Army in China, which our civilization found and excavated, why not do it with the entire planet at once? Judging by the artifacts, our predecessors did not limit themselves too much in the scope of their deeds. And that's it for now. Friends, subscribe to my channel, and if you liked this video, don't forget to click the like button. See you on the channel next time.